You're watching Vancouver TV, where we show you what's happening in your city. We've got the latest movie reviews and access to your favorite celebs. From fashion to red carpets, live shows, and more, we cover it all, keeping you informed about your city and in the know about upcoming events. There cannot be peace without first a great suffering. The greater the suffering, the greater the peace. The end you've always feared is coming. It's coming. And the blood will be on your hands. I prayed to God that it wasn't true. Solomon Lane escaped in Paris. And now the world is at risk. This is the CIA's mission. You use a scalpel. I prefer a hammer. This is a bad idea. Is it ever a good one? Honestly. He's not just some observer. He's an assassin. I don't trust anybody outside of this room. You go rogue, he's been authorized to hunt you down and kill you. That's the job. No hard feelings. Which way, Benji? Turn left! Go, 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 go! What are you waiting for? I'm jumping out a window! Oh, uh, sorry. Good luck. When the clock stops, Ethan Hunt will lose everyone he ever cared about. You don't understand what you're involved in. You need to walk away. Please don't make me go through you. Ethan, that's not who we are. Maybe we need to reconsider that. Accepted, Ethan. You've lost this one once done is done. What's done is done when we say it's done. Showtime. Oh my god. To win tickets to see this movie and other fun movie price packs, visit www.vancouvertelevision.ca. Hi, I'm Ashley Davidson with Vancouver Television. Today we are here at this beautiful location. I don't know how much you can see, um, but we will be interviewing actors, directors. We have a touch of reality. Let's go see what it's all about. So we're just here with Nicole Oliver. How are you? I'm great, I was just saying, the view, how could you not be? You can't see it, but it's fantastic. So. I know, we wanted to put the camera that way, but then it would be too dark, but it's actually beautiful. Just for ourselves, yeah. it's just for ourselves. I mean, we're a pretty view too, you know. <laughs> Very nice view, yes we are, you more than me, you take no, it. No, 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 that is not true at all. Um, so you are a voice actor, actor, director, mom. Mom, <laughs> partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, I do lots of things, but I like it that way, you know? It keeps things lively and interesting, and one of my favorite, well, two of my favorite words are options and possibility. So by having lots of slashes after your name, you know? The more you can do, the better. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Put one hat on, and then put another hat on. And then I think maybe the longer you can actually survive, especially in this crazy business, yeah. you know? So, yeah. So how did you get into all of this? At a young age, or? At a very young age. I was a dancer. I danced from the age of three. I blew up my knee when I was 12. Thought what else I was going to do, thought maybe I'd be a lawyer, then I did the high school play and I told my parents I was going to be an actor and then they crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is it. This is it. <laughs> so yeah, I went to York University, that was the trade-off. I could be an artist but I had to get a university degree mm. and so when I was at school back in the dark ages when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, um, yeah, it was, uh, U of T, it was U of T, it was York University, U of A, University of Alberta and UVic. And so I went to York and uh, I graduated and uh, I've been an actor full-time, self-employed. That's what's on my income tax return and I've been doing it now for almost 30 years. Wow, that's amazing. Not everyone can say that. No, 
<laughs> and I have a house. I am an artist who owns a house. There, there you go. go. So it is possible. <laughs> it is possible. Yes, it is. Was it really hard for you to break in or was it one of those things that it just kind of all fell into place for you? I think looking back, it, it's it, it, you could say it kind of fell into place for me. Certainly in the moment, it felt, you know, full of all that <laughs> artist angst and all those things. But yeah, it's been, I mean, I've worked hard. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything is an accident. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, you know, I think if you allow yourself open to options and possibility, there's those words again, you know, anything can happen. You just got to have your eyes open for what's coming next. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so you've done voiceover on, was it My Little Pony? Well, that's probably the most popular show. So uh, My Little Pony, a show about unicorns and alicorns and friendship and all sorts of lovely things that has a phenomenal worldwide following. Our fans are called Bronies, and um, they range in age from 2 to 102 men, women, boys, girls. Um, and uh, we are in our ninth season. So if you would have told me probably the thing... I've traveled the world with this show. I've met people from all over the world. If you would have told me that when I started, mm -hmm. when I was a Shakespeare actor, very, <laughs> very serious, that a show about horses, <laughs> flying horses. Ponies and rainbows. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be, you know, something that allowed me to take my family around the world, travel, meet incredible people, and, f and here, but so, here we are. So, yeah, but tons of stuff. I've worked with the Lego franchise and... You know, and I'm directing cartoons now, which is outstanding. I love it. I get to use my brain, and I feel like I'm really a big part of the team. And, um, you know, and still acting whenever they need a white middle-aged woman. <laughs> I'm your lady. Um, and I have a web series that just dropped this week. See? I said drops. <laughs> That's what the cool kids say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Slang. Drop. I dropped the web series. Dropped web series this week. Um, and it's, but it's really cool because it is a science fiction web series, but it's female driven. So female created. The lead is a, a, a gal named Chelsea Reese who's on the 100. I play her mother. Um, what is it called? Narco Leap. Yes. And if you Google it, you will find it. Uh, tell us. Uh, is the big sponsor, so it's on Optic TV, but it's also, you know, YouTube's. I don't know, it's on the World Wide Web. Just Google it and you'll find it. But I love it. We're getting a bit of your voice demo right now. Yeah. <laughs> My kids don't like it. They never appreciated it. Everyone's like, oh, your kids must love when you read stories to them. And when they were little, the average thing you'd hear all the time from them is, Mom, could you just please read it in your own voice? <laughs> You're like, why would I? This is like a, a famous well, voice here. <laughs> no appreciation, no respect. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah, no, well, they do, but they're just like. <laughs> they're like, mom. mom no. That's what moms do, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now that they're teenagers. So now I do it all the time because I know it bugs them. Yeah. So that's my revenge. And so in school, did they, did you go to voice school or was that? No, oh, it's all part. I went to theater school. The theater, the theater, you know, <laughs> acting. I, um, I, learned all the breath movement scene study peeling back your emotional <laughs> layers like an onion learning to be vulnerable yeah. all that stuff and trained with some amazing teachers mm -hmm. and I trained over in, in London England as well yeah um, and voice is a part of it right it's part of her body and and so my agent said you should try it and I booked my first gig and then cartoons and um, Cartoons are awesome. I mean, Chris Rock kind of blew the lid off it for everybody. I was like, shush at the Oscars when he's like, I love cartoons. I can go to work in my pajamas and they pay me a million dollars. I was like, okay, the pajama part I do, the million dollars, that, that's not me. But, <laughs> like, I, but I do have a house. <laughs> but I have a house in Vancouver, right? But um, it really is a kind of job. It's banker's hours in the, in the entertainment industry. So... You know, you can go be creative and be funny and be cash and relax. And We're going to have a bunch of people now being like, yeah, that's the career I want. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that want to do that, yeah. you know, and it uh, doesn't matter what you look like. Right? Yeah. You can you can do like a little boy's voice or you could be a little girl or you could be the grandmother, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like. So that's what's really great about cartoons. Oh, my God, I love it. So Narco Leap, when does that? Uh, uh, July 15th. Um, and it's been getting huge numbers, great traffic. So everyone Google it, do watch it, because it's a really great story. It's about a girl who has narcolepsy, which is a real condition. People with narcolepsy um, will fall asleep at the moment's notice, often triggered by stress. And narcoleptics also have generally speaking very vivid dreams mm. well now to make that concept become sci-fi uh, my daughter when she dreams in the show she has these dreams where she's other people in different places doing these amazing things 
Turns out she can astral project, that's the science fiction part, into other people. So then the government gets aware of her, and the government wants her, and I'm the mama in the middle, and panic and bedlam and fantastic fantasticness ensues and unfolds from there. So So did you write this as well? No. My uh, my friend Kate Green did. Well, David Schmidt wrote it. Kate Green um, got the concept from another writer, and uh, she produced it and got it off the ground. And Kate was uh, a production assistant I met a gazillion, bazillion years ago on a reality show I hosted called Crash Test Mommy. Mm -hmm. And Kate and I have stayed in touch all these years. And when this project came along, she goes, I'd like you to play the mom. So it's really great in this business when, you know, in that sense of people you've worked with in the past, mm -hmm. and especially women, when they remember you and they lean in and they offer up, you know, yeah. it's just really special. So um, it's playing in all these places and getting all sorts of great accolades. So season two, hashtag season two. Yay. That's what we're, that's what we're trending, trying to trend. <laughs> hashtag season two. <laughs> season two. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to trend. Yeah. Okay, so they can just go online. And yeah, just look Google Narcoli, look it up online. and watch it. Yeah, like I said, or go do your laundry, but just press play. Just press you'll play. Be you'll get you. you will be hooked and you'll have clean underwear. So, I mean, come on. And were you also on Wonder? Was I was, yeah. yeah. So Wonder um, was a film that was released uh, not too long ago with um, small actors, Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah, no big deal. Not bad. Uh, uh, and uh, Owen Wilson and Jacob Tremblay, and it's based on the young adult. I think it's what we're supposed to call it now. Yeah, now. Not teen, but young adult book of the same name. And uh, I played uh, one of the boys' moms. Again, trend, right? You seeing a trend? Mom, mom. <laughs> mom. Um, but it was an incredible experience. Uh, Steven Chablowski directed it, and um, it's not very often where you actually feel like you're, as an actor, you, that you're, you're really heard uh, on set, especially when you're working with big names like that. But um, he made everyone feel super special and part of the team, and I think that kind of energy translated to how it came out in the screen. And um, yeah, it was—it's a great film. It, it, you'll cry if you watch it on a plane. You'll cry, and then you'll look around and see everyone looking at you, <laughs> or they're crying too because they're watching it on a plane. Great. So but. we're just here with Camille Mitchell. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Gorgeous day. So Lovely beautiful. Day. <laughs> I know. I know, wish we could get this view in here. Um, so you're an actor, writer, director? Yes, yes, acting for far too many years. And uh, the last uh, six years, I've been writing and directing. I won a Crazy Eights back in 2012, which was fabulous. What did and you do for the Crazy Eights? I did a short film called A Mother's Love um, mm. that uh, was an extraordinary experience and went off and won uh, Best Drama at the London Super Shorts in England mm. and went off to Madrid International Film Festival. It was nominated for a bunch of awards. and So you wrote and directed that. Mm -hmm. Did you act in it as well? No. No, no. It was with starring Susan Susan Hogan, extraordinary actress, and um, uh, Charles Joseph Mitchell, an extraordinary actor. And you were on Smallville for about seven years, playing yeah. Sheriff uh, sure. Sheriff Nancy Adams. It was a lot of fun. Um, she was uh, she was quite a character, and it was it was a fabulous experience. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get into acting? Did you go to school or? God, yes, I, I actually started in pre-med at university and um, it was just, the course load was extraordinary and my family's in acting and they had always encouraged me to act and I always thought it was a terribly frivolous profession and had this very, <laughs> I had this really grand idea of what it was. Right, because your dad was an actor. Yeah, he was a wonderful actor, Cameron Mitchell, and my mother was an actress in Europe. and. Um, Johanna Melvine was her stage name over there. And uh, so I needed what they called a Mickey Mouse course. And someone said, take an acting course. And I took it and I just fell in love. It just, I, I took it at UBC, it was fantastic. I did the theater department there and then went to London to study to Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, which was an extraordinary experience. Oh, that's so lovely. And um, so you also went back to school. So you took, you were on Smallville for about seven years mm -hmm. and then you took a break. Uh, yeah, I did. I did a bunch of other TV, mm. and then um, uh, then decided to to try and just to see what would happen. And the Crazy Eights thing came up, which was very encouraging, mm -hmm. and the awards came up. And then I went uh, to work on my master's in film. And at, you did uh, writing, and you studied more writing. And yeah, screenwriting and yeah. film production, in and in Los Angeles, yeah, yeah at Loyola Marymount <laughs> University. There, there's a school of film and TV, which was great to do at my late age. It was like I was the oldest person in the room, but that was okay. They just didn't know what to do with me. But <laughs> no. I did another film when I was down there called By the Fountain that also went on to, to do some festivals. And, um, and now I, I'm just 
just focusing a bit on, I'm, I'm writing, I've written a feature film script called The Vacant Lot that I'm trying to get produced and just trying to work on, actually work, work on acting now. I'm loving acting again, so yeah. sometimes it's nice to shuffle it around. Okay, so we're just with Sebastian and Mickey. Yeah. How are you guys? We are, well, I am fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and how are you? Well, I guess we are great now, yeah. And you two are hosts for the show. You can say it. Worst. Two. First. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. No, no, no. And they're matching today. And that was not planned either. Not planned. Great minds think alike. Um, can you, you tell know. us a bit about your show? Who's going to talk first? We'll let Mickey go first. Okay. Time. Oh, that's so nice of you, Savvy. If he's being nice, he's, he's about to pull something for sure. Age before beauty, right? <laughs> um... Yeah, so the show is based out of Vancouver, and we take uh, the dumpiest house on the block, and we make it your dream home. So say Lions Bay was your dream neighborhood, and you wanted to live here, but you just couldn't afford a home. We're going to find you the dumpiest, cheapest house on the block, and we're going to make it as beautiful as this. So you actually find the house for the... So how does that work? How do you find people for the show? Um, well... Luckily, at this point, they're finding us. We've we've put out uh, on all the socials, and people have been coming to us, and everyone's really excited. They've seen season one, and so it's been great. We've been getting a lot of hits. So they come to you, and then they you choose a place, or and so then they tell us, let's use Lions Bay as an example. They're like, you know what? I want to be in Lions Bay because. Um, I grew up here or I need to be close to the ocean or I'm a fisher person yeah. not fisherman we have to say fisher person um, and uh, and so so we go to Lions Bay and we're like okay um, you know this is your dream house you got the outdoor fire pit and you got the cobblestone and you're right on the ocean but I can't afford a 12 million dollar home so we find you a house maybe Lions Bay isn't the best example because I don't think we're gonna find you a house within two million dollar house yeah and, but you know we find you a house within your budget you're gonna tell me your budget what's your budget Ashley oh you know like a couple million okay perfect so, so we all have that kind of cash just sitting in our back pocket just chilling yeah that's what I'm sitting on it's so annoying it's just big bald here um, so yeah then we fix it up so you're gonna give me your your bucket list your dream list I need that ensuite I need that open I need that fire pit I need that fire pit 100% you know it won't be my dream home without it do you guys come with the house too uh, <laughs> well again you gotta you, yeah if it's in your budget then maybe yeah, we'll work it out and um, so I was talking to uh, Leslie before the show as well and she was saying that um, you need so for the contestant or whoever is getting on the show they need to contribute an amount as well or how does that work it's uh, yeah so basically if you need a reno it's a great deal um, we contribute around uh, forty thousand dollars we have all our, our sponsors and everyone who's part of it and so you get a great deal but you're still paying a good portion so when you tell me your two million dollar budget I'm taking that into factor buying the house <laughs> and doing your reno um, so we gotta we gotta play with it. Yeah. So we so that was first season. Uh, we both host. So we obviously co-host of the show, yeah. um, and we basically just piggyback. Uh, we tag team the the, the show the, and the challenge, the renovation, and with dealing with the homeowners as well. And Mickey and I, we both come up with separate design plans for the homeowners and let them pick which one they like best. Yeah. Last year was an even split. Crazy how that works. It was five and five. It was yeah. Well, yeah. What was the tough one? Because one of the homeowners chose his designs originally, and then halfway through changed to mine, because uh, they decided open concept was a better way to go. Or opener. Opener. Concept. And yeah. you guys won an award at the Leo Awards. Is that correct? That's correct. We did. Yeah. We went up against Jillian Harris, Todd Talbot, and Fiona Forbes for best TV hosts of a reality TV show, and to our surprise, we won. So. You were shocked. We were pretty shocked. That was our veterans out there. I mean, we, we just came in first year out, and to, to be nominated was the honor, but to win, like, we, uh, we were pretty stoked about it, for yeah. sure. And did you two have any previous hosting experience before this? Or? Hosting, no. I, I've done some. That's not you. I mean, he hosted our sister and his brother's wedding. Oh, well, that's okay. MC. We yeah. we emceed a few weddings. I've emceed four weddings myself personally. No big deal. Ceremony. Yeah, um, I'm also the I'm also the uh, spokesperson for the hometown heroes lottery. It's a charity lottery. Um, but uh, other than that, no no real hosting experience for a TV show. No, like to quarterback an HGTV show is pretty cool. So how did this happen? Like, how did you guys get into this? 
into the show. Into the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, HGTV was looking for um, contractors in the Vancouver area because they were casting for for a show. And then Mickey and I basically um, just through, you know, uh, through the grapevine, we got in contact with them. And here we are. It was kind of a magical moment when we met them. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. So are you guys brothers? <laughs> we're ish brothers. Like, my brother married his sister. So we're, like, technically law brothers. Okay, yeah, because I was like, when you guys were talking, I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> You're like family. <laughs> we're family-ish, yeah. Family-ish. We're yeah. godparents to our nephews, Lorenzo and Mateo. Um, and that's pretty much as far as it that's goes. It. But <laughs> yeah. We're as close as it gets without actually being family, yeah. you know? Where we're godparents. We're soul brothers. brothers. Soul brothers, yeah, totally. And then we're, we're just so similar that we, we decided to go into business and build. And, and then when HGTV gave us this offer, we're like, yeah, it would be awesome to showcase what we're doing. And because we grew up in Vancouver. And so we were like, man, all our friends are getting pushed out because the market's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Hated it. So we were like, all right, well, let's start finding these homes, fixing them up. And then when we started talking to them, uh, they were like, oh, that's a great concept. Awesome. So we're just here with Ronnie from the Real Housewives and her beautiful daughter and her daughter's, or yeah, her daughter's friend. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. We're leaving for Seattle right after this interview. So um, Charlie's friend is here and uh, yeah, we decided to go with the Tesla instead of the Beamer. <laughs> oh, there you go. Where are you guys going in Seattle? We're going to Bellevue, but my niece is getting married. So oh. tomorrow. So we're heading in tonight, and uh, we'll be at a wedding tomorrow. That is so exciting. Are you excited? Yeah, that's, so excited. That's why your nails look so good. Hers do too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys. And our toes. <laughs> and our toes. I love it. Um, so you were on The Real Housewives. Yes. And um, you're celebrating three years of sobriety coming up? Uh, yeah, three years. Five years, really actually except for there were a few drinks in there but yeah. three years now congratulations that is so exciting and so on the show i mean i haven't watched too much of the show but it was quite a party scene yeah it's it's very much alcohol induced i mean they need to create drama of some form we film 5,000 hours and 11 hours are aired so they're going for the nitty-gritty and the dirt and the juice and of course when you add alcohol all sorts of interesting things happen so and i'm sure they clip it together to make you know the most uh, dramatic <laughs> of course and i always say i'm just i'm glad i could help with the ratings <laughs> um so how has your life changed now being sober i don't know life is just completely better of course um i was never one of those falling down drunk alcoholic people um or and i never ever had a drink the next morning mm -hmm. i was never i gotta have a drink in the morning person at all um but I just felt it was affecting my life. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a journey. I started getting sober in 2010. I checked into passages in Malibu. Mm -hmm. And then we started filming The Housewives and I started drinking again. It was almost like it's, you know, it's so encouraged mm -hmm. that it, it, for me, I, I drank in, uh, predominantly in the first season. Charlie? What was your, Charlie had a trick that she had heard from another kid who's 17. When you're at a party, when one day you go to parties. Well, actually, it was my <laughs> friend's brother. And what was his suggestion? Well, because like, if you say you don't drink, they're gonna pressure you more into drinking, so you just walk around for a red sippy cup. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. If you say, I'm not drinking as a child, like a teenager, they're like, what? You know, you don't drink? So yeah, just walk around with the red sippy cup. I think that's a good and idea. And people don't even question it. And then they don't question it. For me, I'm just public about it. Yeah. And I decided to be very public. Um, and that was for one reason. And the reason was to help other people. Mm -hmm. There's so many sober people out there. And a lot of, I noticed celebrities are very open about their sobriety. If you have a spot up in the public, mm -hmm. it's almost like a a moral obligation when you're sober to be public about it because it really does help other people realize that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know what? It happens to anyone. Mm -hmm. And I hate the word alcoholic. I hate it. I think it's like a dirty word. I'm never going to go to AA and stand up and say, I'm Ronnie, I'm an alcoholic. That's my one of my issues. But with AA, 
you don't have to love it all. You take what you want. You take what you need out of it, some of the things you like, some of the things you don't like. I rather like to say alcohol and I collide. It's not my jam. I don't drink well. So yes. I just don't drink like other people. I just yeah. don't like that word. Well, passages, yeah. like when I said that it's completely different from AA, they're like, why would anybody ever put a label like that on themselves? And why would you say you have an incurable disease because it's curable? You know, it's, there's so many different ways. And like I said, it doesn't really matter how you got sober or stay sober. If you need to be sober and you're staying sober, whatever it is, exactly. you know, fabulous, go with it. And so did you have a wine line at one point? I did, I did. I think I remember that. Yeah, Charlie, do you remember that? Yeah, it was called Rehab. <laughs> I love that. Well, well, I, I honestly think that um, I may come out with another wine because we do own a vineyard yeah. down in Napa Valley. And um, I'm thinking about my next wine being called Redemption. <laughs> rehab to Redemption, I think it's good. Um, but yes, I did have a wine line called Rehab, and that was kind of more fueled by um, production. Yeah. You know, they kind of, well, what do you think of Rehab? Okay, that sounds good, and you know, we went with it, and they spin things. Totally. Yeah. And so you're working with a few health lines now, or? I am. Um, I'm thinking about uh, another vitamin line. I used to have a vitamin line called NZ, and it's in the works, so I can't say too much about it, but I would like to partner with a, um, a guy, well, a, a huge hotel owner in Las Vegas. So uh, things are in the works. That is really exciting. We had so much fun today. Thanks for watching Vancouver Television. Again, I am Ashley Davidson. Until next time. <laughs>